Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Fabian Cantalaro, or as he's also referred to, Spartacus, a name bestowed on him for his fearless courage on the bike and also his wide frame. Internationally, Cantalaro managed to win the Junior World Time Trial Championships twice, first in 1998 and in 1999. Cantalaro turned pro with the Mape Quickstep team, which was one of the strongest teams in the world at the time, and thus started one of the glamorous cycling careers to date. So what we're going to look at today is how good was Fabian Cancellara really. Where better to start than looking at his achievements in the monuments and classics of pro cycling. When we think of Fabian Cancellara there are often two races that are synonymous with his name the Tour of Flanders and Paru Bay. In his early years in the Tour of Flanders there wasn't that much success with his best result being sick but in Paru Bay it seemed a much clearer fit to him as he finished fourth in only his second edition at the race and in 2006 Spartacus won Paru Bay after attacking with 20 kilometers to go and his winning margin was over one minute. The victory meant Cancellaro was the first Swiss rider to win Paru Bay since Hendry Suter in 1923. In 2008 the second ever edition of Stara Bianchi riding for CSC Cancellaro managed to escape off the front with Alessandro Balan and the pair rode all the way into Siena and Cancellaro outpowered the Italian in the process to cross the finishing line first. Cancellara subsequently managed to win the overall at Torino Adriatico after he won stage 5 which was a time trial to Recanati and at Milan San Remo that year Cancellara broke away from a leading group in the final kilometers to win the race and in turn Cancellara became just the second Swiss rider to win Milan San Remo the first one being Eric Meikler in 1987. In that year's Paris Roubaix Cancellara finished second after being out sprinted by rival in the making Tom Bonin in the Roubaix Velodrome. In 2010 Cancellara started the classic season well as he won the E3 Pries Blanderen after an attack with two kilometers to go dropping both Tom Bonin and Juan Antonio Fletcher. In the Tour of Flanders that year Cancellara was considered one of the favorites following his E3 win and he lived up to that by attacking on the Molenberg with about 44 kilometers remaining and Tom Bonin was the only rider able to rival him. Cancellara second second attack in the race was the major one as he managed to drop Tom Bonin and this happened on the steepest part of Imur van Heransbergen. After Cancellara detached Tom Bonin, Cancellara soloed to his first Tour of Flanders victory and by doing so Cancellara added himself to the elite list of 11 other riders who had won the opening three monuments of the cycling year. In the 2010 Paru Bay, Cancellara attacked on the Monson Pevel sector with more than 50 kilometers to go in the race. No rider was able to close the gap to Cancellara and he rode into the Roubaix Velodrome solo finishing two minutes ahead of Tor Husov who finished second. In the 2011 season Cancellara won the E3 Pries Blander and Halbecker now after he attacked with 16 kilometers to go and finished by himself. At the Tour of Flanders Cancellara attacked with about 60 kilometers left and caught up to the leader Sylvain Chavanel. Chavanel proceeded to sit on as he had teammates in the chasing group and declined to contribute to the pacing. With four kilometers left, Cancellara attacked twice. His second attack was matched by Chavanel and the Belgian Nick Noyens. And in the final sprint to the finishing line, Nick Noyens took the win and Cancellara was left very disgruntled at the manner of win that Nick Noyens took. In Paru Bay that year, Cancellara managed to salvage his second place after a lot of bad luck as Johan van Sommeren triumphed and the chasing group with Cancellara refused to work with the Swiss legend to catch Johan van Sommeren. In the 2000 12 season in Srabianki, Cancellara countered a Greg Van Avermaet move that demolished most of the other riders as he quickly dropped Greg Van Avermaet as well as he passed the Belgian rider and the BMC leader Balan scrambled to get on the wheel of the Swiss rider but with no success this time and thereby Fabian Cancellara went on to win Strade Bianchi for a second time. In the 2013 season Cancellara won his third E3 Halbecker title and thereby cemented his name as one of the favorites for the 2013 Tour of Flanders. He lived up to this by attacking on the Quaramont and only Peter Sagan could match Spartacus. Cancellara then dispatched Sagan on the Paterberg with 13 kilometers remaining. Cancellara soloed to his second ever Tour of Flanders title. In Paru Bay that year, Cancellara was the strong favorite and he was attacked multiple times by other riders but Cancellara didn't crack. Cancellara finally responded with the attack with 16 kilometers to go and only Sepp Van Mark and Stenek Stibar 
remained on his wheel. Unfortunately for Stebar, he collided with a spectator and that ruled him out of the race finale. Cancellara managed to outsprint Van Mark in the Roubaix Velodrome to claim his third Paris Roubaix win. In the 2014 Tour of Flanders, on the final ascent of the Auto Quartermont, Cancellara attacked and Set Van Mark was the only rider able to match him and they caught the leading breakaway riders as well. At the final, Cancellara managed to outsprint the other riders to win another Tour of Flanders. In Pyro Bay, Cancellara attacked during the Cafu de Lab sector, forming a select group. Unfortunately, the group never caught Niki Terpstra and they were 20 seconds behind the winner and Cancellara managed to claim third place. Unfortunately, when looking at the monuments, Cancellara did say that he wanted to win Liege, Basta Liege and Giro di Lombardia, but unfortunately, the Swiss rider was never actually at the two races and thereby he couldn't attach his name to the exclusive monuments winners group. Now let's look at Cancellara's record at the Grand Tours and the World Championships. For the Tour de France, it didn't take long for Cancellara to earn his first major victory. In fact, it took only six minutes and 50 seconds at his first appearance at even a Grand Tour, the 2004 Tour de France, where he won the opening prologue and this was ahead of Lance Armstrong himself. He wore the yellow jersey for a day as well. In the 2007 edition of the Tour, Cantalara managed to bag himself another prologue, this time in London and in front of Andreas Kloden of Astana and he wore the yellow jersey once again. On stage two, unfortunately, he was involved in a very large crash and he crossed the finishing line, appearing to have a hand injury. But on the next stage, the yellow jersey wearer refuted those claims and managed to win into Compiègne after he caught and overtook the breakaway group. Cancellara relinquished the yellow jersey on stage seven when the race moved into the mountains. At the World Championships that year, Cancellara won the time trial yet again, and this time by a margin of 52 seconds, and that was defending his 2006 title, which he won in front of David Sabrisky and Alexander Vinokurov in Salzburg. For the 2008 Tour de France, Cancellara was a domestique for his team leader, Carlos Sastra, who ultimately won the Tour de France. Cancellara was later awarded the stage win in the penultimate stage after Stefan Schumacher tested positive for EPO and thereby Cancellara was given the win. 2008 was an Olympic year and it was in Beijing and Cancellara represented Switzerland in the time trial. He managed to win the gold medal by over 30 seconds down to the Swedish rider Gustav Larsson. In the 2009 border Swiss, Cancellara managed to win the opening time trial and the final time trial as well. Well, cementing his overall victory of the race as well. Not long after in the Tour de France, Cancellara went on to win the opening stage and subsequently wore the yellow jersey once again until the seventh stage. The 2009 World Championships was also a home World Championships for Cancellara and he managed to win the time trial event by over a minute to second place finisher Gustav Larsson and over two and a half minutes down to Tony Martin. And this meant that Cancellara was now tied for the most World World Championships time trial titles with Michael Rogers. In the road race, Cancellara was not able to follow Kedel Evans' attack on the final climb and subsequently Cancellara managed to finish fifth. In the 2010 Tour de France, Cancellara won another prologue in the beginning and he held the yellow jersey until the second stage after stage winner Sivan Chavonel took it away. But Cancellara managed to reclaim the jersey only a stage after Chavonel had taken it and he held it until stage seven again when Chavonel would actually be the rider to regain it. Cancellara was not finished, however, at the Tour de France. He was a very good domestique for Andy Slecht, especially on stage three, the cobbled stage where he still kept Andy Sleck in contention. And he managed to win the individual time trial on the 19th stage, finishing into Poyak, 17 seconds ahead of his other rival, Tony Martin. At the World Championships in Melbourne in 2010, Cancellara won the time trial for a record fourth time, and he managed to win the time trial event by a significant margin. In the 2011 Tour de France, he was unable to win a stage, unfortunately. And at the Worlds, Cancellara was not able to win his third consecutive time time trial title as well, finishing third behind the eventual winner Tony Martin and the runner-up Bradley Wiggins. In the road race, in the final sprint, Cantalara finished an impressive fourth behind the HTC Columbia trio of Mark Cavendish, Andre Greipel and Matt Goss. In the 2012 Tour de France, Cantalara won the opening time trial in Liège and wore the yellow jersey until the seventh stage where he lost it to the eventual winner Bradley Wiggins on La Plage de Balfi. At the Olympics that year in London, Cantalara was in a 
a favorable position in the road race but unfortunately he badly negotiated a turn and with about 15 kilometers to go he crashed and unfortunately that meant that he finished five minutes behind the eventual winner he was in pain but it was later revealed that he didn't suffer any fractures and unfortunately for the defending olympic time trial champion he only finished seventh in that year's time trial event. In the 2013 season, Cantalara entered the Vuelta a España and managed to win stage 11 which was an individual time trial by a margin of 37 seconds ahead of the then world champion Tony Martin. Cantalara also rode in support of his team leader and the eventual Vuelta España winner Chris Horner until he left the race to focus on the world championships that year in Florence. In the Florence world championships Cantalara finished third in the time trial behind Tony Martin. In the road race for the most part Cantalara managed to stay near the front but unfortunately he was dropped on the final climb of the day finishing 10th overall. In the 2015 Tour de France, Cancellara claimed the yellow jersey thanks to a third place finish on stage 2 but he was involved in a massive pileup on stage 3. It was later revealed that Cancellara had to abandon the tour after two fractured vertebrae. Unfortunately we wouldn't see Cancellara don the yellow jersey again in his career but he also holds the record for the most days in the yellow jersey without winning the Tour de France with 29 days in total. In Cancellara's final season, he managed to claim his third win in Strada Bianchi, the organizer later named one of the sectors of the race in his honor. At Cancellara's final Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro and also his final time trial of his career, Spartacus managed to win the time trial event ahead of Tom Dumoulin and Chris Froome. Cancellara ended his career at the Japan Cup Criterium on the 22nd of October 2016. So there you have it, Cancellara was well and truly an incredible rider on the cobblestones but also a magnificent time trial machine and now quite conveniently he's the agent for the next superstar of switzerland that's it for the video as always if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and of course thank you for watching and have a nice day